Sabi, can you tell us why uh, people are marching almost every day in Britain now? Yeah, people are marching um, after the racist murder of George Floyd. We've seen an explosion of protests across the US and here uh, in almost 200 towns and cities. And people are absolutely fed up with racist police brutality, with the systemic racism that is present in, in our society, uh, which is holding black people down, which is killing black people. Um, and we're here to protest against that. So we've seen marches last weekend of hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, the statue of a slave trader came down to Bristol. And we're carrying on with our movement. We're letting the government and the police know that this isn't something that's just going to go away. We're going to keep coming back and we're going to keep demanding freedom and justice. What else do you want? you want just uh, justice for the uh, police brutality or what do you want? It's, I mean, it's wider than that. And we can see that we're already making wins. When we look at, in the United States, the fact that those officers were charged when they wouldn't have been if these protests hadn't happened. The fact that they now opened the case again of Breonna Taylor. So there's a huge move, like, there's a huge move uh, in terms of getting justice for those victims. But it also goes wider to that. It goes to abolishing the police. It goes to the criminal justice system. And it goes even wider than that. It goes to the fact that here in Britain, uh, black and ethnic minority people are more likely to die from coronavirus, are less likely to have access to better education and healthcare, to live in uh, in housing. Like this weekend, we're going to be commemorating three years of the Grenfell Tower fire. So it goes much wider than that. It goes right to the root of the system to say we need fundamental change and we need it now. Do you think still it's a big issue, injustice and inequality in Britain? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, you know, like I said, the Grenfell Tower fire, where they literally let people burn to death and they ignored their warnings of a fire safety. And we know the areas in the UK where people are living in overcrowded housing, they are not underemployed. Uh, black children are more likely to be excluded from schools. Black people are way more likely to be stopped and searched by the police on the streets. Uh, and we know from the last 10 years of austerity that it was black and brown people who were most likely to be hit the hardest by those cuts. Uh, so it's absolutely an issue. It's, it's very, very predominant here. Finally, is this demonstration and uh, meetings are going to continue? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know there's, there's one protest tomorrow which is directly against the, the fascists who are coming to London. But I'm sure there'll be more Black Lives Matter protests in the, in the coming weeks. Um, and, and more than that, this has started a conversation nationally and we'll see a lot more organizing, I think, in a lot, in a lot of different communities to discuss these issues and how we can come together against them. Okay. Can you tell us why you are here today, why you are marching almost every day in Britain? Because of institutional racism. So that's the fact. What the world doesn't realise is that the world has been suffering with a pandemic called institutional racism. And it has been going on for a very long time. What people don't realise is the problems we have in the world actually start from institutional racism. Institutional racism drives poverty. Poverty drives crime. Crime drives violence. So the world focuses on the violence, focuses on the crime, focuses on the poverty. And never do they ever focus on the root problem of the world's problems, which is institutional racism. If we root that out, abolish institutional racism, then we can now start to get a even kill when it comes to poverty, crime, and violence. So institutional racism drives poverty, poverty drives crime, crime drives violence. That is why we are. So how do you do you plan to get rid of the institution uh, racism? So it starts with ensuring that people are no longer silent and no longer ignorant. Those are the two main causes why institutional racism is able to thrive. The average person, they believe that if they're not racist, that is enough. But you have to be anti-racist, you have to stop other people from doing things. So you can't be silent and you cannot be ignorant. If there are some things that you don't know about culture, or you don't understand about culture, you educate yourself. When you educate yourself, you eradicate ignorance. When you eradicate ignorance, then you can become more empathetic. When you become more empathetic, then you can start to eradicate institutions. So it's a vicious cycle, all okay. connects. Do you think the British government actually um, 
doing anything to get rid of the racism in Britain? In my personal opinion, no. In my personal opinion, I don't think it's enough, whatever has been done. It's not enough to completely eradicate such a strong institution in this world. There has to be massive movements, massive conversations. Every conversation that needs to be had has to happen right now so that it's at the forefront and we can start to make progress. So we're doing that as a society, but the people in power are not. And it's ultimately the people in power that are part of institutional racism. Because people in power have racial prejudice, have power, and have the willingness to use that power to the disadvantage of others. It is them as a collective that make institutional racism. So it's now about trying to appeal to those people, trying to get them to understand how detrimental their behaviour is. And it's for them to understand, for us to understand, and then we can start to be more aligned in their minds. Okay, finally, um, George Floyd has, has been killed quite viciously, you know. It, it's not only George Floyd, it happens every day in every single uh, corner of the world. What can be done to, to get a justice and a, a equal society in the world? Everyone has to focus on the roots, and that is why we always bring it to the same thing. Everyone focuses on the individual police officer, or the individual stop and search, or the individual problems within society. You have to focus on the root cause of all of it. The root cause for why a white police officer can kneel on a black man's neck is because of institutional racism. That is the only reason why. So instead of focusing on the man and the, and the killers and the murderers, let's focus on the real culprit for all of this madness, which is institutional racism. Once you focus on that, once we start to understand it once we start to educate ourselves and once we start to acknowledge it because the problem is there is little acknowledgement you cannot fix a problem if there is no acknowledgement that there is even a problem to begin with the world has to acknowledge there is a problem and then we can move forward thank you very much